food traditions did you bring with you and do you still retain from Sri Lanka in Australia? Uh, we have rice and curry. I had rice and curry this morning before I left because I cooked it last night. Um, we have we eat rice and curry three times a week and my kids, my all three of my sons love it um, and they like to cook it. And uh, other than that, I think family traditions should be about sitting around and eating together. TV off, conversation time. That's, that's, I think that everyone should, should adopt that family tradition. How would you describe or what flavours and ingredients would you say are intrinsic to Sri Lankan cooking that you try and incorporate in your restaurant Flying Fish? The restaurant Flying Fish doesn't contain that many curry dishes and if we do we kind of modernise them. Um, but the flavour still has to be the same. Curry leaves is probably one. Curry leaves, turmeric, uh, chilli, cumin. You know, um, there's there's probably 15 spices that you use in curries, and you have to have them on board all the time. Um, but uh, flying fish and what I do with say the show are kind of separate, and we try and sprinkle the restaurant with hints of Sri Lanka. But at the end of the day, it's a modern seafood restaurant um, which um, has. I think the way, the only way I can explain why Sri Lanka went, uh, uh, Flying Fish went in that direction was because when we started eight years ago, nine years ago, I looked around and thought, we need a hook. Every restaurant kind of needs something to make it attractive. And across the water was the boathouse, and their hook was the snapper pie. So I thought, right, we've got to knock the snapper pie off its perch. And so I put on the snapper curry, and that was that was where it started. And in the back of my head was my dad saying, "Open a bloody Sri Lankan restaurant. It's easy. You just cook it all at home, freeze it, and you just need a microwave." <laughs> <laughs> that was his that was his idea. Um, but that that you know that always resonated with me. And, I, and and to bring Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan food to the forefront was an important duty that I thought I had to I had to sort of pursue. What we do with the restaurant now, say, is we're we're turning the bar into a into a cheaper sort of or, or a more accessible dining option and that will have all of these elements and the little snacks and stuff from everywhere. You've been quoted as saying preparation is the key to success. What do you mean by that? Well, there's nothing worse than being in the kitchen when everyone arrives. That's all I have to say. You know, really, do it all beforehand. Most dishes can be finished off. Sweat before, drink with your friends when they arrive. You're talking about getting kids into seafood. That's a really interesting topic. What are your sort of tips to get, you obviously have three boys. What are your tips to get kids interested in eating seafood and, and really enjoying it? We started on them at a very young age and just told them it makes their brain really big. They do, they, they all will eat fish with that. But also, I think having fresh fish and knowing, you know, what's fresh, what my wife, 19 or 20 when we met and uh, one of the first things she said to me was I don't like seafood um, and I took her to Golden Century and bought her a Greenleaf Abalone and she changed her mind. Who are your food heroes and why? My dad, my mum, uh, my grandmother and then in the professional world I think, um, you know, it's a, it may be cliche but I think Neil Perry did a lot for me as far as changing my attitude about what I can and can't cook because I was classically trained. Um, I went, you know, did all the thing in Europe and I was a great French chef. But in the back of my mind were my dad's words, as I said to you earlier on, about, you know, but I didn't realize you were allowed to do that. And in, I think it was about 1986, uh, I was sous chef to Neil when he opened Blue Water Grill on Bondi Beach. And all of a sudden, I think, I think the main courses were $14 then. Um, and I think, I looked at the menu and it had Thai food, it had Indian food, and it was like, hang on, am I, am I allowed to do this? You know, and, and that really, that, and then I got poached by his arch enemy, Michael McC McC McMahon, and went to uh, a Baron Joey house, and at the age of 24, that was my first head chef's job. But that little bit of, that little bit of information just, just gave me the freedom to get away from doing the same thing and express yourself, yeah, so it was, it, it, I, I think he, I'd hate to tell him, but uh, yeah, he, he's probably my, my, my food hero.